Currently working on the GO Transit project in Siemens, Canada, is Dr. Oliver Creighton. Dr. Creighton is the Requirements Engineering Program Manager at Corporate Technology. His responsibilities include consulting, training, and further development of requirements engineering techniques for several Siemens units. He received his diploma in computer science from the University of Technology, Munich, and his doctoral degree with distinction there in 2006. Let's listen to Dr. Creighton talk about his work in video-based requirements engineering and explain how this technology represents visuals in a more enhanced way than diagrams can and how it can help the user and viewer have an experience that is much closer to reality. Thanks for that introduction. So as you heard, my name is Oliver Crichton, and currently I'm working for the Go Transit project in Toronto, where we are renovating the Union Station rail corridor. And I'm also realizing, helping the requirements engineering there, that methods for requirements engineering are growing in importance. But today, this talk, and thank you for joining my session, is um, about something a little bit different. It's video-based requirements engineering. And let me start by explaining um, what the basic idea behind that technology was. We wanted to marry the pixels industry of films with the bytes industry of software and systems engineering. And we wanted to use video to improve the communication between stakeholders of complex or distributed development projects. And we started out by thinking, how do such projects begin? So this initial product idea, or problem statement, is often just a textual description. It can be sketched on a napkin, over coffee, or as you see here, it might already include pictures and diagrams for illustration. Then this initial product idea is usually given to two different groups in a large organization like Siemens. Let's call them marketing and engineering. We found that a big gap exists between these two different views. And this gap is characterized by the techniques and the tools that both these groups are using. Basically, they speak a different language. And as they look to the product from different perspectives, we really thought hard, how do we close this gap? Our approach is to use video-based descriptions of this envisioned product, as the marketing departments would create, and give engineering the ability to combine this with their analysis of the end user requirements. This video analysis serves then as the boundary object that can go back and forth between these two groups, marketing and engineering. Let's have a look at a concrete example. Hey, what's the matter? Daddy, why do they have to cut mommy's tummy open? No, it's not like that. Let me explain. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me borrow your teddy bear. First, they're gonna slide mommy through a machine. Make me a bridge. Great. So they slide mommy through and take pictures so they can find out what's wrong with her. And does it hurt? No, not at all. So after that, they figure out how they're gonna operate and plan everything very carefully. During the operation, mommy will be sound asleep. Give me that toothpick. Watch, they just break mommy like this. And to look inside, they use a little telescope. Give me a straw. See anything? Yeah, she's gonna be all right. Exactly. And now we're almost done. Yeah, and it didn't hurt at all. And since it didn't hurt, she'll be back in no time. And what about her lunch? I think we'll have some sandwiches. Siemens. Okay, so as we see, the marketing view focuses on the human and emotional side of modern applications. We asked ourselves, how can we bridge the gap to the analysis view that looks like this? Even those of you who are familiar with modeling a flow of events in UML and a sequence diagram like this will quickly see that there is a big difference. The marketing film and the sequence diagram are different representations, but are supposed to say exactly the same thing. 
So as a first impression, and in best Hollywood style, I will now show a short preview of the end result when the video-based requirements engineering technique has been applied. So this video analysis shows both views in sync. We can see the participating objects and their relationships at the same time. So where does all this fit in? We studied the main issues that still exist in requirements development. First of all, requirements and technologies change, sometimes even during the course of a project. Second of all, the needs or the wishes of um, the end users are unknown and they have a hard time expressing them. Third, the development is usually globally distributed. And that introduces the problem of how to transport the idea of what we're building to different units in different regions. And fourth, there is limited access to the subject matter experts, so we have to make the most use of the time we have with them. And last, visionary scenarios and requirements are sometimes really poorly expressed in natural language. So why is this an issue? Well, the key factors for natural language problems are scalability, traceability, and maintainability. Imagine for a moment driving directions in a foreign country. Look at this example. Will this form of description scale, for example, for the trip from Toronto to New York City? Let me show you what this is equivalent to. It's equivalent to this one picture and a simple instruction. So we thought if a picture can say more than a thousand words, just imagine what a video-based model will be able to express. Developing requirements is all about communication and what it ultimately comes down to is of course to be economical. We are not creating requirements to fill volumes with text and images, but we want to reduce the uncertainty and we want to reduce the risk in our projects. That's why we say produce to reduce, that's our mantra. A video-based approach is especially useful for innovative applications. What are those? They, they're characterized by a couple of new kinds of requirements compared to traditional systems. For example, take a navigation system that is built into your glasses. It recognizes the orientation, where you're looking, and when you're looking down, which is a gesture for looking on a map, it shows the map. If you look up, it shows the arrow where you need to go. The novel requirements in this case were multimodal interfaces, such as gesture recognition or speech recognition, and several different kinds of controls. How do we specify and develop such innovative applications? And why not simply use another graphical notation for the conceptual models? Well, we think films represent the concepts in rich detail. You see a lot more context and you see a lot more of surrounding information that might be relevant. The reception of a film is much closer, as you've seen in the example before, to the experience of reality. And third, a film is much more forgiving of inconsistencies and it cannot be reduced to poor logic. And this is very good for initial models in a development process. Requirements developers know very well there is no sense in being precise when you don't know what you're talking about. This is probably true for more than just requirements and has been known for quite some time. And last but not least, the film can establish a common ground between the end user, a non-technical person for example, and the developers. The ability to express and understand the vision is now equally distributed among all the stakeholders. Okay, for my final segment, I'd like to show you an example of how we help people like you overcome all these challenges. So first we start out by making some basic annotations to the films and to make it sort of clickable, that we can use it as a canvas. So let's have a look here. You see if we play the movie, as soon as an important object comes in on screen, you see that it is outlined and you can see the relationships and you see that it is tracked with objects from your application domain model. We can also combine several shots in a scene that is shown sequentially. So you see here, time flows downwards and we have put together a couple of clips into one sequence, into one clip. 
But of course, in requirements engineering, we don't, even, we don't always have a linear sequence of events. We have alternatives. So for example, if you enter a building and authenticate by smart card, there might be the alternative to authenticate by thumbprint. Or there might also be the alternative of authenticating by a retina scan. So we have to do some kind of rearranging of these clips into a scene that we can non-linearly uh, put next to each other. So for example, if we have this um, scenario where we have minimal invasive surgery, here we have unfortunately the alternative of an open surgery missing. And what we can do is we can just add another clip right here, hook it up in our graph and say this is the alternative way. This is something that can also happen in our model of the scenario. Okay, so now I have seen how we enable the use of video as a complementary and natural and widely understood requirement specification language. It allows the end users to validate and contribute to your models without the need of learning your notations. And we define a technique for computer-aided generation of former models from the annotated video. And now, I would like to um, invite you to go over to the virtual world. You get to see how I look like as an avatar, and I can show you some more exciting stuff. Hello and welcome to the virtual tour through the VBRE airport. Today I'm going to show you some exciting technologies in the area of requirements engineering developed by Siemens Corporate Technology and deployed right here in the airport. Please follow me. As you know, security in airports has faced many new challenges in the past few years. Well-handled security is vital for efficient airline services and for assuring a continuous, smooth management of security operations. We're trying to define the requirements for this complex environment using technologies borrowed from the cinema, digital videos, and classical requirements engineering. What is classical requirements engineering? Well, requirements engineering deals essentially with managing customer needs and requests. And by classical, we mean the usage of paper and simple text-based computer tools to support engineers in their tasks. Now, let me show you an example of how the requirements for employee security systems are represented using the video-based requirements engineering technique. Please, follow me. Because of their reliability, we're using Siemens equipment and services for access control, identity management, threat assessment, bag tracking, and general security monitoring. We also use their systems for fire safety, building evacuation, and airfield lighting. Sounds amazing. So many technologies. Can I ask a question? Which technology are you using to deal with foreign intrusion? For instance, if somebody falsely claims to be an employee, is there a mechanism to detect such a deception? Yes, there is. Let me show you how an employee is authenticated before entering a secure area. Here is a brief clip showing how the technology works. Wow, looks fantastic. Let me ask you another question. What are the white bars in the movie? Are they part of the authentication process? Actually, these white bars are indeed part of the technology used by Siemens corporate technology units to develop the requirements for the security system, as you can see it here. I'm going to show you a few more examples on the second floor. Now, let's move over to the baggage claim area. As you can see on the wall at the right side, we have defined the requirements for a baggage claim area as well as for unattended baggage using the same video-based requirements engineering technique. Now, let's go upstairs and we'll take a look at a few more details and examples of developing requirements using videos. Here is how we deal with the requirements for security in airports. As you know, Siemens provides a wide range of electronic security, including intrusion, video surveillance, vehicle scanning, and license plate recognition. For instance, to protect secure airport zones, license plate recognition is a feature that must be considered in order to guard against intruders and to automatically permit entry only to registered cars. 
Defining and developing the requirements for such features can be done in three basic steps. One, shooting a video of the situation. Two, developing requirements for the functions and components. And three, merging the requirements into a digital video of the situation that describes both the required behaviors and the items involved in the action. The case of vehicle access security is a great way for showing the potential of such a video clip based technique. As you can see on the left side of the wall, we developed unified modeling language or UML models for the situation. Showing this sort of structured diagram depicts the interaction between security devices and monitored objects over time, such as the airport security camera and the object that the camera is scanning, such as the license plate of the car. The camera and the license plate are referred to as actors or agents who have roles to play in the course of the security checking event. So now there is a depiction of the situation in a short video clip and also a graphical representation of the actors and their successive activities in a UML diagram. The particular kind of UML diagram in this case shows vertical lanes called swim lanes with one lane for each action and a trace of that actor's activations and activities as the event unfolds. In order to bridge the gap between developers of this technology and the requirements engineer, both the standard video clip and the UML views are merged together, as you can see on the right side. That's great, but how about systems which don't exist yet? How are you going to shoot videos of these non-existing systems? Now that's a good question. Well, non-existing systems can be simulated using edited digital videos and special effects such as virtual or mixed environments. The table you're looking at perfectly shows the video-based requirements development technology. In particular, for the specification of the Siemens ID Management and Access Control Services, the Siemens CT Group used the same technique to bring requirements and services together in one package. For the rest of the tour, let me show you a few other applications of the video-based requirements engineering technology. The VBRE technology can be used as well in a wider context using various tools, such as handheld devices. An integrated camera records the surroundings or the systems in place, and the VBRE software overlaps requirements specification models. Another exciting feature of the VBRE is that multiple scenarios can be envisioned, added, or modified on the fly. This provides the customer and the developers with rich alternative paths that can be considered for developing the various scenarios. And now, Oliver would be happy to answer your questions. All right, welcome to the Q&A session for the video-based requirements engineering topic. So, as you're all aware by now, you can pose questions by going to the sheet on the left and click on Questions tab and then enter your questions and uh, I can answer them here directly via audio. Okay, let me check. We see there are questions coming in. Here's a good one. I am selling a completely different product as these shown on the wall. Will your technology fit into my business? Well. So that's actually a very good question. The video-based requirements engineering technology is completely independent from any domain or product. So this is one of the advantages of, of using just regular video cameras and trying to define requirements from these scenarios because what you actually have to do, as you've seen in the video, is you have to go around and ask your users and your domain experts what it is that they want to see. So what you're really doing is you're shooting like a home video of uh, use of your future products, and that is the, the initial seed into what you're using to analyze the requirements. So yes, absolutely. If you have a, a completely different set of products, if you have different customers, the technology of video-based requirements engineering will be definitely workable in, in any environment because if you can show it on video, it can be used for video-based requirements engineering. 
Next question I see is, isn't digital video as used today enough to deal with similar issues you're dealing with without the need to any new tools and costs? Well, in fact, we use these tools, right? So video-based requirements engineering, the idea is to use the existing digital video technologies that we have, um, just what you can buy in, in, in video stores we enrich them. So what we do is we take regular videos, we take what we find in the real world and what we can capture with video cameras, and what we do is we, we add more content. So we, we use it as a canvas. On top of the video, we can analyze and we can annotate what's important about these pieces in the video. So this is helpful for further development later on downstream. So if you define the requirements and define what it is you want to see, what your vision is, you bring some more additional advantage in, in your development. Okay, I see there is a, another question. Does SCR include video-based requirements engineering as a topic in the RE training program? Well, yes. Actually, what um, SCR and corporate technology offer is a requirements engineering foundation course, and that includes um, always some topics that are more or less on, on a little bit of the outskirts of regular requirements engineering foundations. And what we do is we typically show a presentation that is similar to what you would have shown today. And we talk about some of the things that are sort of the intent of video-based requirements engineering that you can do without actually going the full nine yards and, and using all of the technology. What we're doing is we were trying to, to educate people and, and train them into seeing what the big picture is, right? So requirements engineering is not about getting a million lines of detailed requirement statements. It's typically about getting an understanding of what it is that the customers really need, what their essential requirements are, and, and then consolidating that and making a feasibility check, seeing that it's something we can actually do as Siemens for them. Here's another question. Uh, can video-based requirements engineering be further linked to RE tools like doors? <laughs> That's actually a very good question because we have already done this. I had no time today to show this, but uh, in, a, in a longer version, and if you're interested in, in lo knowing the links between doors and the video-based requirements engineering, please definitely give me a call or contact me in some other way. Uh, I can show you the connector that we've done. So what, what we're actually doing in this case, where we want to seed uh, initial modules in, in a requirements management tool like DOORS, uh, we take what we have filmed and analyzed in, in this video-based requirements engineering tool, and we are then later on using the film grammar that underlies this technology that really is sort of explaining what how to read the film um, and create the initial first, let's say, empty template, uh, not so empty because we already fill in lots of information about the scenarios that our customers have, and we, we give the requirements analysts and requirements engineers something more to work with that is directly based on the stuff that has been filmed that has been analyzed on the video. The actual clever thing about this is that it's not one way, right? The question was, can it be linked? And the link is in both directions. So when you then later on update something indoors and, and change your scenario, what happens is you can get those changes back into the video environment and, and mark those places where the scenario would have to be changed because you changed something further downstream. And by the way, if you, any, any of you have more follow-up questions to, to what I'm answering, um, please don't hesitate to put those, also these follow-up questions in maybe write follow-up in front of it so I know that this is a follow-up question to one of these uh, answers that I've been giving. Okay, here is the next question I see. How much would the technology cost me to deploy, including the logistics, and what kind of return on my investment can I hope for? Well, so one of the benefits in, in deploying video-based requirements engineering is that you really don't require any special investment of expensive equipment. What we rather do is we take advantage of, of, as I mentioned, standard home video products, cameras, video editing software, everything you can, can typically get already for cheap. 
and they are widely available also even in, in mobile devices like smartphones. So you, you can pretty much take whatever you want to t use to, to capture video clips, and they don't have to be high production value, right? We're not trying to, to get Oscars for this. Uh, we're trying to understand what the environment is like and what the customer's intent and what the customer's real workflow is typically. And so the the technology can be more effective in a way to transport uh, lots of these contextual details about your, your future scenarios of use. And in this, I think the overhead that you can reduce and the, the wrong development and the costs you introduce by miscommunication and misunderstanding of what it really was, what was required, and in which context it's going to be used, there is a clear return on invest in that sense, I think. Okay, the next question, do you use any automated mechanism for extracting individual actions from the video? That's a very good question. So the, the automation, automation in this case uh, is really we are aiding a first analysis of, of annotating which objects are relevant. This is sort of the, the basic pillars you have to put in. You have to let the software know which parts of the video you want to focus on. So that's pretty much saying uh, I'm, I, have a, I have the scene of something that is important, like somebody driving a train, and then there is snow in the background, right? So, so this snow in the background might just be there because you happen to film the stuff in the winter. It might be an essential requirement of the system that you're trying to build that is dependent on, on what you're trying to model and what you're trying to say in these, um, in these cases. And what you have to do is you have to put in the relationships, and that is already the first analysis step that you're doing. Um, you have to put in relationships between these objects, and, and this is sort of the hierarchical structure of the video grammar that we have developed, where you can say, okay, I see some thumb pressing a button, right? So, so we have two objects, and they do something to each other. And this relationship becomes what we call a constellation in the video. And, and this is sort of the, the, the way to recursively build up some, some more semantic information about what the video tells you. And what you can then do in the end, it's, it's all stored in a semantic database. And this database enables you to search for things and, and put in little wildcards. So you could search for all the object, all the clips in your, your requirements video database where something is being pressed, right? So, so this is the kind of thing you can do. If the question was more related to computer vision and automatic uh, extraction of uh, where the object boundaries are, for example, we didn't explore that at all, not in my group at least. We, we said we are requirements engineers. We're focusing on the application, and the entire computer vision stuff is left to the other experts of SCR, and you have seen presentations before mine today, that there's actually a, a lot of inroads being made in, in this computer vision area, and the architecture of, of our software would allow us to, to aid this first annotation step semi-automatically or even completely automatically. The only thing is what we found uh, typically Computer vision is heavily domain dependent. So if you're if you're filming people in an airport, it will be totally different algorithms as if you're trying to detect small deviations in the blade of a of a turb gas turbine. So so the thing is, you you have to know what the video is about if you try to do some automated extraction of features. And since we wanted to be, as I said in the beginning, completely domain independent, we said. Let's not focus on, on this part of the, the problem. We're focusing on the, the, the idea what happens when we understand what is being said through the video. OK. Next question here is, how do you manage hybrid requirements gathering? Video, oral, written, and pictures. Excellent question again. The, the idea is here. We are, in a sense, a little bit like movie makers, right? We're, we're not Hollywood, but we're still free to take everything that creatively is possible out there. So uh, if, you, if you know a little bit about how movies are made, uh, and watch some, some behind-the-scenes um, clips about big productions, you will know that all of this, of course, fits together, right? I mean, some movie makers start with a script, so they have something written before they actually film. 
Others prefer to do more dogma style and, and go just with the camera and say, I'll fish for good clips and, and whatever I capture, I put into my movie later on. And you have some interviews, you have basically everything creatively that you want to work with, you can use. And it com comes down to the essential question, what's the story here and what's the big picture? And, and this is one of the drivers in developing this technology also in SCR. We, we said typically requirements are, are very detailed oriented and very focused on technical stuff and sometimes even too much. We, we need to step back and understand what is the big picture, what is the big story, where is the actual value for our customers. And this will enable us to, to uh, give sort of like a, a big vision or, or yeah, big, big moving picture of what you're trying to really build. So this is what we say is the perfect begin in, in a requirements development because you know first what you're talking about before you try to get all the details right. Okay, let me see here which question I can answer next. How long does it take to translate videos into the requirements documentation? Okay, that, that's a, a <laughs> very good question too. So this is a little bit related to, to the process itself. So what we envision how this is being done is we, we say, first of all, we produce the happy path clip documentary about what is the essential feature here. So if we would take a, a mail sorting machine or if we would take, uh, I don't know, uh, other, uh, let's take the mail sorting machine. The, the thing is we would first focus on the essential bits that even on, on a documentary television production would be shown in this respect. We take out all the details that are not necessary to understand the big picture, and we, we take the happy path first. And maybe we do an, uh, two different stories that also is typical for documentaries if you have a before and an after clip, you see. So before we had this in Cologne, and after that we have this much better improved version of the mail sorting system. And so with that, our, our strong belief is you have to be highly iterative. So the, the question of how long it does it take is, I would rather rephrase it. It's a question of getting the first stuff quickly in front of the eyes of many of your stakeholders. So in our experience, if you, if you take maybe two weeks from scratch to first iteration, and then talk to you with your stakeholders, that's a good time frame. Like if you, if you go over two weeks to get feedback on what you have been filmed, uh, what, what you have filmed to this point, um, you will probably take a wrong turn somewhere and, and then again do some, some production that is not necessary. So I see that we are, we're, uh, have only time for one final quick question. Let's take this one here, are there any metrics that can be generated, for example, percent completeness of the requirements? Yeah, sure. I mean, the, the quick answer here is that what we're doing is we're, we're structuring your problem space. What the, the customer really sees important, what they find necessary in, in, in explaining what the scenario in the future shall be. And from that, you have all these individual blocks. So what you know is you have seeded your requirements model with a lot of placeholders that need to be filled in, right? So you have an initial idea of, of how big your requirements spec needs to become. And that becomes essentially the first step in understanding how complete you are, how much percent complete are you with defining the requirements. And we know this is a re iterative process and, and the management of requirements goes on until the very end of the project. So, so we really believe the, the video clip can become a living document that is easily updated, easily changed, and, and constantly being referred back to if somebody new joins the project, if you want to have new people come in, if you want to outsource part of your development. The, the movie clip becomes your, your common understanding of what you're trying to build. So that was pretty much also inspiring us to develop this technology further. Okay. With that, I think I'm out of time. I thank you for the very good questions, and uh, I hope you understand a little bit better what we have been doing here, and I'm very much looking forward to more contact with all of you in the future. 
Thanks a lot. Bye.